So studying in cross-legged, if cross-legged is comfortable for you, if it's not, take a pose that is. We're going to rest our hands, palms towards the ceiling, just wherever they rest. That might be on top of the knees, it might feel a little better having them down in your lap. So wherever feels best for you. And just starting to breathe and bringing your attention to your body. And so it can be a place where maybe we start to notice a few tendencies. Right? Maybe we start to notice that um, we have the tendency to drop our head forwards or the tendency to let our belly kind of expand out. And so we're noticing those tendencies here in our seated cross legged pose. So we're being aware of the physical body. And we're seeing if we can create a lengthening up from the tail, from the sit bones. And so that lengthening is lifting up and rising out towards the crown of your head. And as you find that length, as you lengthen, then some of those tendencies start to undo a little. We start to find the long lines of our body. And as you find the long lines of your body and undo maybe the slouching or the head dropping or whatever it is that may occur, and it may not, yeah, for you, we find that actually the pose as we lengthen up away from the sit bones, lengthen up away from the tail, it's quite effortless. And now we begin to notice our breath. As you inhale through your nose, noticing the temperature of the breath at the end of the nose, maybe a little chill at the nostrils. And as you exhale, your breath is warm to the temperature of your body. So it feels a little different. And so as you inhale through the nose this time, notice the way your shoulders go along for the ride, your chest expands, your belly expands. And as you exhale, everything kind of softens back down, falls into the space made by the breath. And as you inhale, your breath expands your body. It creates space in its own way and your body rises away from that. And as you exhale, everything draws back down into that space. And maybe your next breath is your fullest breath today. We're drawing the breath in through the nose, feeling the expansion of your lungs and exhaling through your nose. And maybe this breath empties your lungs out more than any other breath you've taken today. And taking that again, really drawing the breath in, feeling that expansion of your body and then pressing the breath out and feeling everything draw back in. Continuing to take that breath and noticing again, let's come back to our physical body. Have we started to fall into our tendencies again? Just noticing, let's rise up long from the crown of the head, strong through the body, lifted. Still moving the breath through the body. Now let's notice our thoughts. Where are our thoughts? Are they in this breath? Or are they floating around a little bit in the past, a little bit in the future? A little bit in this present moment. Let's bring them really strongly to the present moment, noticing our breath. And as you continue to notice your breath, drawing really strongly into this present moment, then things become a little more intense. You notice a little more. You're noticing a little more on your inhale, the expansion of your body, maybe even down to your pelvic floor, and noticing a little more as you exhale that everything is drawing back in again, back in towards that center. Maybe as you inhale, you notice that you lengthen. Maybe the opposite feels true for you. And as you exhale, maybe you notice you soften. Or maybe you lengthen on your exhale because neither is right. It's just an experience, right? And so we are noticing. Now, seated here in your seated cross-legged pose, I'm going to reintroduce you to those mantras that we've taken, those I am statements. And you can right now take them straight after me if you like with conviction. Or you can just say them in your head knowing that we're going to revisit them later. I am strong. I am wise. I am powerful. I am strong. I am wise. I am powerful. Let those sit with you. Remember, they're not my ideas, right? They're not my opinion. Those things are truths. You are strong. You are wise and you are powerful. You are all of those things. You were born with an inherent wisdom that has grown and grown. You were born with strength, the strength to survive, to be, to experience. 
and you are powerful in all of this. this these are truths, so know them as knowledge. Let's take a lovely big stretch over here, reaching those fingers out nice and wide, spreading those fingers, palms towards the front of your mat. That's it. We're going to see if we've got a little space to back bend here. So we're just going to draw back a little. We're going to draw those hands back a little. You may have a whole lot more space to draw those hands back than I do. If you do, draw them back, but we're not pressing into pain. Let's come back up again. We're lengthening from the sit bones. We're going to press our palms together and we're really going to press them together. So we're activating the muscles of our arm. And then we're going to draw those hands behind the back of the head so that we touch the heels of our palms onto the back of our head and our fingers press away, but we're still stress pressing nice and strong. Now from here, our hands are going to move away from each other a little bit. You're going to keep that connection through your fingertips. Let's move with the breath as you exhale, squeeze your elbows towards each other, just a little. And then as you inhale, reach them back again, maybe pressing your palms together. As you exhale, we take that little squeeze, we're activating muscles around our shoulders, being aware of them, and as we inhale, we press back. Let's take it one more time, I know it feels a little stuck. We're gonna exhale, squeezing together, maybe we come up to the fingertips, the thumb tips. And the inhale, we press back and we press those palms. Let's reach them up overhead. Let's turn our palms towards the sides of the room. We're going to sweep them down, fingertips drawing back towards each other just so that they're lengthen, lengthening out long from the body. Yeah. How does it feel with those fingertips drawing back? Nice little stretch all the way through to your elbow, right? Now let's bring those palms towards the front of the room in front of your mat and then let's rotate those palms towards the ceiling how much space have you got to rotate there now with your hands rotated like this let's take little circles right, let's take little circles moving in one direction how is your breath right now are you holding it let's come back to it let's connect with that breath breathing through your nose inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply. How are those tendencies in your body if they're presented again? Is your head dropping forwards or back? Are you letting your belly expand out? Let's keep rising nice and strong away from the sit bones. Now we're going to turn our palms back towards the floor and we're going to rotate those arms in the opposite direction. If you can't remember what direction you were rotating them for first, don't worry about it. Yeah, usually it's whatever you go with first, then go the other way. So we're just again taking little circles with our arms and really waking our arms up today. Some of our poses today are arm balancing poses. Yeah? We're not necessarily lifting our feet. But the poses where we're pressing down into our arms. So I want you to be aware now, are your shoulders hurting? Are your wrists hurting? Are your elbows hurting? Or does it just feel like a challenging kind of movement? Be aware because you're going to modify as much as you need to. Let's bring our hands together in prayer in front of our heart space. But again, we're going to take a little press and we're going to roll our shoulders back a little. Just a little squeeze, 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 and then soften. <sighs> Let's take a little stretch through those shoulders now. And to do that, we're going to reach our hands behind us. We're going to clasp our hands together. And rather than aiming to straighten your arms, just slide your hands down a little, rolling your shoulders back towards each other. Nice little stretch across the front of the chest. Can you touch your fingers or your thumbs down on the floor? Can you lift your gaze a little and lift your sternum slightly? And yeah, just a nice little back bend to start. And then from here, we're going to come over onto hands and knees. We're going to get a little bit more uh, vigorous movement, not too vigorous, but we're going to get a little bit more movement going, right? And remember, you modify as you need to. First, we're going to inhale and we're going to lift into cow pose. If the opposite breath feels best for you, go for it. We're going to exhale and we're going to coil into cat. Yeah. Now, inhale, come into cow pose. That's it, yeah. And exhale into cat, rounding your body. Inhale, coming into cow. Exhale, coiling into cat. Let's inhale, come back to hands and knees. Let's exhale and press back to child's pose. Keeping that movement going with the breath, we're going to inhale, come to hands and knees. 
Let's exhale, stay here, lift belly button towards your spine, squeeze your arms, your legs a little closer together, right? Knees and hands don't move from where they are, but we've got that action of squeezing on your next inhale because you're not holding your breath. Reach your left arm and your right leg. Now that left palm towards your center line rather than towards the floor. From here again, lifting your belly button towards your spine just a little because there's a squeezing and engagement of the muscles of your belly. And your gaze is low, right? Lengthening nice and long down the back of the neck. Seeing if we can square our hips slightly towards the floor, but there will be a little flare through your right hip. Squeeze that elbow and knee towards each other on your next exhale. And on your inhale, take a reach. Nice and strong down into your right hand. Let's take that a couple more times. Squeezing on the exhale, elbow and knee towards each other under the body. Inhale, extending and reaching away. This time, pause as you exhale, squeeze elbow and knee towards each other under the body. Take a pause. Notice your breath. Not holding your breath. Just aware of your breath moving through your body, supporting you in certain phases of the breath. Let's bring that hand and knee back down to the floor. How's your right wrist feeling? Give it a little roll. Give it a little roll if it's feeling a little compressed. If you are feeling pain, please modify. Yeah, down on your forearms maybe with your palms down on the floor or just leaving this out altogether and coming into child's pose. Let's bring that right hand back down onto the floor. We're going to really spread those left fingers. Let's put a bit of attention there. Spread those left fingers and then glide your right arm and your left leg out. Yeah. So again, right palm towards your center line. That's it. A little squeezing lift of your left leg. But we're squaring those hips mildly back towards the floor. Gaze is low, back of the neck is long. And now moving with your breath. As you exhale, squeeze elbow and knee towards each other under the body. As you inhale, reach your hand and leg away. Still nice and steady. Exhale, squeeze your elbow and knee towards each other under the body. Inhale, reach arm and leg away. You're going to pause this time as you exhale, squeeze. That's it. Holding there for a few breaths, noticing. <sighs> noticing your left hand as it presses down towards the floor, nice and strong into that left arm. Noticing the way your breath supports you a little more in certain phases. And then hand and knee back down to the floor. I want you to press back into your child's pose now. And in your child's pose, just creep those fingers a little further away. Yeah. Creep those fingers a little away. Draw your shoulders back, soften them back. Now, if your forehead's not resting down on the floor, just float it up rather than resting your fists underneath your forehead because you're just here for a couple of breaths and I want you to get a nice arm stretch here. One more breath. And then as you inhale, back on up to hands and knees, tuck your toes, lift your hips, press back to your downward facing knee. In your downward facing dog, have those fingers nice and spread, those palms pressing, those shoulders just softening away from your ears a little. Let's not shrug them towards our ears. The back of your head, the back of your skull is a curve of your spine, so you don't need to have it right between your arms. The relationship of the back of your head is to your spine. And you can pump your heels one at a time down towards the floor. Finding that length down the back of your legs, finding a little movement where it might be that today you want to embrace some stillness here. Always the breath is moving through your body, creating that oceanic sound with the inhale and that oceanic sound again with the exhale. 
We're staying here for one more breath in downward facing dog. Modification here could be hands and knees or hand, uh, forearms and knees. Let's creep our hands back. So creep your hands back towards your feet and just check out those feet. Sit bone distance apart, yeah? softening down over your legs, letting your belly connect with your thighs because your knees are bent enough for that to happen. And then your upper body is waterfalling down over your legs. You're letting your head relax. Now, if this doesn't feel okay for your back, you can rest your elbows just above your knees, which creates a nice little back stretch. Sometimes that's a nice option to take, particularly in the morning is a lovely stretch in your back. But otherwise, just letting yourself waterfall down. We're going to creep around our mat a little bit. And we're going to really be aware of the strength in our arms as we do so. Okay, so we're going to inhale and we're going to creep our hands forward back to downward facing dog. On our exhale, we're going to lower our knees to hover off the mat and a little hovering hands and knees pose. And then we're going to inhale back to downward facing dog. Let's take that one more time, just one more time. Exhaling, lowering those knees to hover off your mat. Inhaling, pressing back to downward facing dog. As you exhale, now rock forwards, bring your gaze between your hands and step those feet forwards so that now you're in forward fold at the front of your mat. Let's inhale, come to halfway lift. You're going to move a little more frequently with the breath now. Exhale, back down into forward fold, aware of where your weight is resting through your feet. Inhale, come to upward chair. Is it nice and even? Let's exhale, rise up to stand, hands draw down, moving through our standing dance. We're going to inhale, let's reach those hands towards the ceiling, that's it. Exhale, hands down into prayer in front of your heart space. Turn your right toes in, step your left foot wide. Doesn't need to be in that order. Just come to face wide on your mat, turn your heels out. Let's take a stretch of the back of our legs. So hands onto your hips, we're going to soften those knees a little, we're going to be aware of the motion of our hips as we come down, taking it slowly, grounding down into the soles of your feet. Remember, have a chair in front of you if you want. Use those props, maybe folding all the way down your hands towards the floor. Still there is that action of lengthening away from your sit bones, from your tail. Still, there is, that, there is that action of grounding down evenly into your feet. Yeah, so become aware of that. One more breath here, just noticing. But then we're going to keep that movement going as we connect with our breath. So we're going to rise up. We're going to heel toe our feet a little closer together. Yeah, and then we're going to rest our elbows on top of our thighs and our palms together in prayer. A nice familiar one here, right? <laughs> we're going to really ground down into our feet. Now my toes have turned out a little. Rather than toes straight towards the front, my toes have turned out a little in the squat. Now let's move. We're going to inhale, rise up, reach our hands out wide. Biceps parallel to the floor. Exhale, coming back down. Let's press those elbows, press those palms. And then let's inhale, come back up. That's it. Keep on moving. You've got this. Exhale, back down. You are powerful. You are strong. Inhale, rise up. But you're wise enough to know when to rest. Exhale, press back down. We're going to inhale, rise back up. And then we're going to exhale, press back down. Let's stay here. <laughs> Let's stay here for a breath. Let's stay here for another breath. Ground down into your feet. Feel your toes down on the floor. Hands down onto your hips. Rising up to stand. We've got those thighs to stretch out soon. We're going to turn back towards the front of our mat. We're going to step our feet forward so that, we're there, so that we're there. Now, above everything else, this is a thigh stretch. So if you need to hold on to a wall, then do. Rock your weight over into your left foot. And notice, notice your breath. 
Notice that lifting up and away from that, grounding down into your feet. Right? How does that feel? Does it feel a little weightless? Over into that left foot, and then we're going to see if we can pick that right foot up behind us. <laughs> we're going to draw that right knee back towards the left knee. That's our next movement. And we're going to soften our hips towards a little. Feel that tension, that release of that tension through your right thigh. Aware of that, uh, that tightness. There's often tightness there through that muscle. Accepting of that. To release from there, there is a softening. To release through there, you have patience. <laughs> you have understanding that your body is just what it needed to be. Any tension within your body is created, is there, as a result of certain actions. Well, just because that is the natural way that it is. And so accepting. We're just here to find a little balance. Let's play a little more with this balance a bit later. We're going to bring that right foot back down to the floor. And before we come over to the other foot, just stand, notice. How different do your feet feel, the legs feel? Can you feel maybe one is a little more solid, one is a little more weighted? Let's take a little stretch through the other leg now. So we're going to rock our weight over into the right foot, spreading those right toes, rising up, finding that length along your body, grounding down into the right foot. Remember, it's okay to use a wall to support yourself. We're going to see if we can pick that left leg up behind us. <laughs> and then we're going to soften that left knee back. We're going to soften our hips forwards a little. Having that understanding, that compassion towards our body of any tension, wherever it is, knowing that it's there, being present with it. Understanding that your body is the way it is because it's become that way through certain actions, regular actions that you take. Or because that is just the natural way of your body. We're accepting of that. We breathe. We soften. And over time, maybe that left knee does draw a little further back. Maybe those hips do soften a little further forwards as that muscle movements. But let's just be concerned with this breath. Let's bring that foot back down to the floor. If you have pain through your knees, I want you to have a cushion or a blanket near you for this next pose. So that's if you have pain when you press down into your knees or for whatever reason, right, or when you bend your knees a certain way. Inhale, sweep your hands towards the ceiling, lift your gaze. Exhale, draw those hands down into prayer in front of your heart space. Rock your weight into your left foot. Start to float that right leg out behind you. So like a seesaw, we're not folding in half at the middle. But a seesaw can be long along any of the, the axis. We're not bringing our upper body any closer to the floor. But you can have your right toe down on the ground and be lengthening up and away from here. Or you can be starting to rock and come parallel to the ground. We're staying here for another breath in our warrior three. And get here how you need to, but if you can, soften that left knee, touch those right toes back down behind you, lower that right knee down to the floor. This is where you might want your mat or your blanket underneath your right knee. Let's roll those shoulders up and back, lift our gaze, strengthen the back of our right leg, nice and strong through the back of your right leg. Giving a little lifting of your right rib cage up and away from your hip. Sit bone. Nah. Sit bone is sending energy up towards your crown. We're finding that energy. We're finding that length. Yeah, we can feel that length through the back and the front of the body. 
Are you present? Are you aware? Are you aware of those sensations? Breathe. You might be able to go a little further. You might be able to reach those hands up towards the sky, towards the ceiling, lifting your gaze. Yeah, drawing now into a little back bend. Sometimes it feels nice to bring those hands together, point those pointer fingers and draw those arms a little further back. But remember, do support yourself with a blanket. Yeah, if you need it. Or a cushion. Bring those hands back down towards the floor beside your left foot. Stay here, letting this be a little counter, or a reasonably strong counter to that back bend. From here, we're going to lift that right knee, and we're going to bring our hands a little further forwards, and we're going to press our palms down towards the floor as we float our right leg up away from the ground. Now, because your palms are pressing down towards the floor, it's a bit of a handstand preparation. So your left knee can be as bent as you need it to be. Your right knee can be bent. We're just letting that give us a bit of freedom to bring our hands down towards the floor. Resting nice and strong, spreading those fingers. Staying here for another breath. Let's turn this into standing splits. And now come up onto your fingertips. Press down into that left foot. Maybe you can start to straighten the leg a little and start to lift that right leg up behind you. Yeah. Just however far it comes to you. So this pose can be quite a little bent up pose, a little seed, or it can start to lengthen and stretch. And then soften that right foot back down beside the left. Take a few breaths in forward fold, noticing how your legs are feeling. How your breath is coming back to that breath, inhaling through your nose, feeling your belly expand, exhaling through your nose, feeling you soften back down again. That little rocking motion. Inhale, you rock up a little. Exhale, you soften down a little. Let's take that again. Inhale, feeling that gentle rising. And exhale that softening, that release back down. Should we make this a little bigger? <laughs> Let's inhale, come up to halfway lift. Exhale into forward fold. And through your standing dance. Inhale, coming to awkward chair. Exhale, rise to stand. Inhale, hands towards the sky, lift your gaze. Exhale, hands down into prayer in front of your heart space. Rock your weight over into your right foot. And start to float that left leg up behind you into warrior three. Again, warrior three, our relationship of our leg to our upper body is really deeply connected. You're like a seesaw. <laughs> you know, the upper body only coming parallel to the floor no further or you're pressing into standing slip. But your toe, your big toe can be down on the ground, right? That left big toe, your upper body is just a little higher. Can you find that length? We're staying here for another breath. Let's draw those shoulders a little closer towards each other. Just nice and spread across the front of the chest. And then we're going to touch that left toe back down behind us. We're going to lower that left knee down to the ground. Oh, great. There's a blanket here, left knee. <laughs> And so just noticing this stretch, first of all, the stretch down the front of the left hip, right? There's a stretch that we kind of sat within in our standing pose. And so now we're seeing how we are here with it. Again, we're finding length along the front of the body. Length up the back of the body as well. And maybe you can take this a little further. And reach your hands towards the ceiling. Maybe you can turn this into a little back bend, lift your gaze. If you would like to bring your hands together, pointing your pointed fingers, that's just going to lift the fire in your body a little more. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So still pressing down into your right foot. I know my left toes are tucked under. This can be with your, the top of your foot down on the floor if you like. 
I find I've done that a little more supportive for my knees. It's going to depend on the shape of your knees. Maybe you can start to draw those arms back a little, coming a little more into a back bend, wherever your back bend takes you. But it is a long extension. It's not painful, right? <laughs> And then we're going to bring those hands back down towards the floor. Here's our counter for that back bend. We're taking a forward fold over our right knee. You might need blocks for this. You might need to rest your elbows up on the chair. Whatever you need to be doing, just coming into a bit of a forward fold. From this forward fold, we're coming into that handstand pose. So can you bring your hands a little further forward, palms down towards the floor, press down into your right foot, and start to float your left leg. Because you're staying engaged down into the hands, have those fingers spread, have those hands pressing, you can have your knees quite bent. <laughs> right? The lifting of the left leg is just to give us a little space to experience that flying of handstand. Now let's turn it into standing split. So can you come up onto your fingertips maybe? And maybe you can start to extend your legs a little longer, a little straighter. And lower that left leg back down to the floor. Soften down over your legs, coming into your forward fold, feet sit bone up distance apart, knees soft. Water falling down over your thighs. And just notice, are there any sensations of pain? Can you ease those? Can you avoid pushing into that from now? <laughs> Noticing your inhale and your exhale, the way that it moves your body. Let's move again through our standing dance. As you inhale, come to halfway lift. Drawing those shoulders back a little, fire in this pose, right? And then exhale down into forward fold. We're going to inhale, come to awkward chair, firmly grounded into the soles of your feet. Feel that evenness, the spreading of your toes. Stay here for a breath. Stay here for a breath. A little drawing in of your belly. A little gliding down of your tail, not to eliminate the curves of your back. Let's honor those wonderful curves through your back. Exhale, rise up to stand, your hands draw down beside you. Inhale, hands reach towards the sky, lift your gaze. Exhale, hands down into prayer in front of your heart space. Hands down beside you, taking a few breaths here in your mountain pose, Tadasana. Feet sit by distance apart, shoulders soften. Imagine that I have my two fingers here and I rest them just underneath your sacrum or your, your sternum. I'm applying the tiniest bit of pressure. So close your eyes and imagine my touch just there, just underneath your sternum. That soft pressure. You can feel your breath moving, my fingers. You can feel your body softening away from my touch, strengthening against your spine. And then release away from that imagining, just your own body now. Aware of the way your breath lightly moves you. Maybe you're aware of your heartbeat. And maybe it is the sound of your breath, the sound of life going on around you. Let it be, it's all good. From here, from the standing pose from our Tadasana, if your eyes are closed, open up. Bring your hands into prayer in front of your heart space. Let's take a spinal roll. So if spinal roll doesn't work for you, then just come down into forward fold, however you need to get there. Otherwise, we're drawing our chin a little closer to our hands. Our gaze low. We're going to start to roll down our body. Yeah, so bend your knees. I love to stop just between the shoulder blade roll and take a breath. And then descend a little deeper and find myself through the middle of the back. Maybe you'd like to join me in that, taking a breath. 
And then coming down a little further on the exhale to I find myself in that forward fold, inhaling deeply, feeling the expansion across the low back, the back of the pelvis. And then again, forward folding all the way down into your forward fold. Now let's bend our knees. Press your hands down into the floor if you can. Come back into hands and knees. And from hands and knees, pressing back into child's pose. Stay here now for two breaths. Returning that breath to that steady rhythm. When you're ready, coming back up on an inhale is great, but maybe an exhale works better for you into hands and knees. And from hands and knees, come on down to seated. Let's bring the left knee out in front of us. Step the right foot up over the top and soften down into the sit bones, finding the sit bones down into the floor. Now, if you need to modify this pose, do. Ways to modify this pose is you can sit up on a blanket or you can extend your left leg out long and your right leg steps up and over the top. Find your sit bones, find your, find your pose, find one that works for you. Now that you've got that, we're going to imagine our pelvis. Sometimes in this pose, people's pelvis tips back. So if it was a bowl of water tipping out the back of the mat. We're going to see if we can tip it nice and evenly. If our pelvis is a bowl of water, it's holding that water nice and even. It's not tipping over the sides. <laughs> Wonderful. Now from here, let's bring the left elbow. Rest it on top of your right knee. If it doesn't get there easily, if you suddenly feel all compressed, then just bring it back a little. Rest your hand there. Inhale, lift up, rising up through the crown of the head. Exhale, come into a little twist, that right hand beside or behind you. Noticing the squeezing, that action moving through your digestive system as you breathe. As you inhale, let it open you out a little, right? So you untwist. As you exhale, let it squeeze you back into twist, lifting in and up of your belly button, feeling that delicious ringing. As you inhale, soften, open back towards the center a little. Exhale, take that little squeeze a little more deeply into twist. And again, inhale, let it open you up a little, coming back to centre slightly, just slightly. And as you exhale, take that twist. Let's hold here now. Hold here for a few breaths, as long as it feels okay. And remember, the aim of our twist is not to crack our backs. Our twist is creating a really nice squeezing through the centre of our body that's happening with your breath. As a squeezing and lifting up through the spine in a very nice, if strong, stretch through your hip. If it is painful, then you come on out of it and you modify it. Let's unwind and come back around to centre. Reach your legs out long. I'd love you to take that pounding. So we're shaking our legs, pounding the back of our legs down on the floor. Can you feel that across your cups? Can you relax your toes? Yeah, relax your toes as you pound your legs. Relax your ankles. Shaking those calves down to the floor, drumming out with your legs. Can you feel the back of your knees down on the ground? Maybe, maybe. Depending on the shape of your legs. Can you feel the back of your thighs down on the ground? Can you lift them up and away with each shake? So that you're really drumming down onto the floor and stop. Feel that humming, that vibration moving through your legs, floating around the fascia, bringing up the pathways. If you have a bit of a fold, walk your zip bones back a little and fold forwards over your legs. 
as you inhale, floating away from your legs a little, like the tide, right? Rising up and away from the shore of your legs. And as you exhale, that wave of your body crashing back down along your legs. As you inhale, there's a little rise. And as you exhale, the tide of your body, the waves of your body crash down over the shore of your legs. And again, can you feel yourself moving into that little space you've created? Not limited by your own expectations of how your body moves. Just deeply aware of how your body actually moves based on the sensation that you're feeling. Let's stay here in this fold for a few breaths now. So your breath is still moving your body, but you're not rising and falling with quite so much power. It's more of an internal rise and fall. The, the shore of your body is still crashing down over your legs, rising and falling, but it's very internal. And as it becomes quite internal, feeling that movement of your spine, keeping that spine healthy through the deep, full breaths. And then back up to seated. And then we're coming through the other side. So now your right knee out in front of the body. See, it's towards my center line. So right out in front of your body rather than over to the side. So just take that little correction if you need to. We're going to step that left foot up and over and we're going to ground down into the left foot. And even more, we're going to sit down into both of the sit bones. If you can't sit bone, down into the sit bones, if you need to take a little lean to the side, be aware of any curving sideways of your spine. It's a lean, right? Your spine is still nice and long. But it's okay to extend that right leg out long. That's all good. Once you've found yourself seated in this pose, let's bring our attention to our pelvis. As it's slouching back, if it was a bowl of water, is it tipping out the back of the body? Let's bring it nice and even. Right, so that we're holding that water nice and evenly in the bowl of our pelvis. It's not spilling over the sides. And then we're going to bring that right elbow to rest on our left knee. And we're going to bring that left hand just beside or behind us. If the elbow and the knee is too far, then it's your hand. Let's just, let's just expand across our shoulders on the inhale, lifting up. And then as you exhale, just squeezing into this twist, maybe your gaze comes towards your left shoulder. As you squeeze with the exhale, just that natural movement of the body, not forcing it around with your arms. Finding that movement with the breath again. So as you inhale, we open up a little back towards the front. That's it. And as you exhale, you squeeze and you deepen into this twist. As you inhale, you open out a little towards the front. Feel that lovely pulsing motion with your breath as you exhale, squeezing into the twist. As you inhale, opening back towards the front. This time we're going to squeeze on the exhale back into the twist. And we're just going to pause here. Not pausing your breath. Still breathing with that Ajayi breath. Noticing that pelvis as it tips back again. And we align it. Bring it like a bowl of water, holding that water without it spilling. And unwinding back to centre. Rather than the legs extended straight out this time, bring them straight out. We'll give them a little shake. We'll let those, um, those hips release. And then we're going to bring them out wide. Heels down on the floor, lift yourself up, hop yourself a little through the forwards if you can. It's going to intensify that stretch through your groin, through your inner thighs. Not so much that it hurts, <laughs> just so that it's a nice little challenging stretch. And from here, again, how's that pelvis? Is it tipping back? Were you rising up and away from this pose? Can you fold forwards over your legs? Now, in this bow, forwards over the legs. We're not seeing if we can raise our head down to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> our belly button would be the first thing yeah, to come down towards the floor. Our head is extending, crown of the head out along from the tail. 
And then there's that creeping down towards the floor. Chin lightly tucked, finding that legs down the back of your knees, rather than hanging that head towards the floor. Be aware of that. Maintaining the integrity of your spine is being aware of your connection, of your of the connection of your head to your spine. Right. Now, how are your toes? Are you keeping that connection to your toes? Your toes still nice and alive and drawing back? Now, flexing those feet. I know some of you, you uh, gymnasts out there, get a little bit sore at the back of your heels when you're taking this pose. So don't forget, you can have cushions under the back of your heels. You can soften your toes if you're really used to those pointed toe poses as a dancer, as a gymnast. and just slowly start to experiment with flexing your feet with pulling your toes back. You don't need to do it all in one experience. It can be a slow transition. You're just trying to find a little balance. We're going to come back up. And from here, we're going to take our little hug down these towards us. Give them a squeeze. Give your knees a squeeze. And if you just squeeze your knees, you might need your knees a little wider, making space for your body. And then from here, we're coming in to see the cross legged. Again, I'm going to work through those I am statements with you. So first, close your eyes. Notice your breath. Notice the power in your body. Your body is strong. Your body is strong. You are strong. And so saying these um, mantras, these I am statements after me with conviction. And the people around you can hear them. All the better. All the better for them to hear uh, these positive thoughts about you. There's this positive information, the knowledge that you have about your wonder. I am strong. I am wise. I am powerful. I am strong. I am wise. I am powerful. Sit with that knowledge for a few breaths. That is wonderful. It is wonderful that you know those things about you and you do know them about yourself. That knowledge is there. The recognition of that is there. That is might be deep down. It might be deep down that you know those things about yourself. You know that you are strong, wise, and powerful. Yeah, the energetic self that is you, it knows those things. It has those knowledge, that knowledge. You're just recognizing it again, revisiting it, becoming familiar with it again. Let's come down to the floor. And to do that, I want you to lie on the side. And then I want you to roll over into your back and come down to the floor. We're going to come into recline butterfly pose if that feels okay for you. So that's the soles of your feet together, your knees resting that way. This can be a really comforting pose for some people. It can be a painful pose for others. If it is a painful pose for you, don't take it. It is quite compressive through the back of the body. If you've had any sacroiliac pain in the late stages of pregnancy or whenever it was, then it can be a pose to avoid. But you're just really aware, right? So just really aware. It can feel nice. Let's rest our hands on our belly. So if your legs are extended out long towards Shavasana, or if your feet are together in recline butterfly pose, rest your hands on your belly. I'm making a little diamond around my belly button. Yeah? But I'm not being fixed on pressing my pointer finger and my thumb together. They're away from each other a little. I press them together. I hold my breath. I tense my body. So have a bit of space. You're resting your elbows down on the floor. And just notice as you inhale, your belly rises a little. It's affected by your breath. If it's not, can you get it to be? As you exhale, it softens back down towards the floor. Notice that. Tuck your chin a little. Just a little to lengthen the back of your neck. Keep breathing. Soften across your shoulders. Soften across the back of your neck. 
release and relax and start to let go, but still use that little pressing of the soles of your feet together to support you here. Just one more breath. I love the way this pose really connects me to the earth, it connects me in all of the spaces that are grounded. Because so much of my body is lifted away, the, the thighs and the knees, it presses me down into the back of the pelvis. Now there have been times where this pose hasn't felt good for me and I haven't taken it. If it's you, then you don't have to. Let's draw those knees back towards each other. And let's again draw them in towards us. Give them a little hug. Ah. <laughs> We're going to make some space between our knees. We're going to draw our knees out wide towards the edges of our body. Give them a squeeze. Let's take some circles with our feet. One way and then the other way. And then let's draw those knees back towards each other, just if you can. We're going to take a little rock from side to side. Is your head moving with the rest of your moving body? If it's not, can you get it involved? So that you rock lightly from side to side and it's all of your body that rocks. So that as you hit your head rocks lightly and massages across the back of your head. Ah. Coming back to centre now, we're preparing for Shavasana. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> We're preparing for Shavasana. So put a warm blanket on or just a heavy blanket. That weight can feel really good. Well, maybe you're okay just as you are and you want to touch those feet down. Now, if you have low back pain or just because it feels really nice to, then remember you can have a rolled up blanket or, mat or something under the back of your knees. You can prop yourself up in whatever way you want. Let's soften those legs down towards the floor and soften our shoulders. Can you imagine your shoulder blades as little dinner plates? And can any, any of them rest and kind of flat against the ground? Awesome. Rest and your shoulders down on the ground, spread across your chest, having enough space between your arms and your body that you're not pressing your hands against yourself. You've got room. A little bit of space between your legs. Close your eyes, notice your breath. As you inhale through your nose, you can feel the temperature of the air in the room. And as you exhale through your nose, your air, the oxygen has been warmed to your body temperature. As you inhale, you feel that little chill maybe at the end of your nose. And as you exhale, your breath has been warmed to the temperature of your body. So notice as you continue to breathe evenly that that is a connection to the earth around you. You're drawing in nurture from the earth, it nourishes each and every one of your cells. And as you exhale, you're releasing a little of yourself, a little of your energy out into the earth. Anything that doesn't serve you. As you inhale, you replenish, you renew. As you exhale, you let go. And there is that wonderful connection with the earth here. So that through just your breath, just simply your breath, you're aware of your connection to the earth. And as your breath travels down into your body, you're aware of the physical connection to the earth, the way that your body rests down on the ground. That there are points of your body that are connected to the earth and other parts of your body that lift away a little. And as you breathe, your body moves slightly with your breath. And the earth holds you with each breath. So the energy of you lifts slightly away. So again, you have that wonderful connection. The connection of gravity of the earth drawing you down. Live your body rising lightly away again with your breath. And each breath relaxes you a little more. As you become deeply aware of your connection to the earth, you're able to let go. You are a child of nature. Everything is just as it should be. This is the only way that it could be. 
let go, release and relax, softening the muscles of your body, softening now your attention, releasing a little more deeply towards the earth. Let go, soften, release, surrender completely to Shavasana. With your next inhale, noticing again your connection, allowing your energy to bubble up a little, to rise, feeling that energy at the palms of your hands. Maybe you can feel that energy moving around all of your body. Smile. Everything is as it should be, and everything is good. Smile. And in this breath, everything is good. From here, taking your time, supporting yourself as you roll over onto your side. Maybe your body feels a little different down on the floor on your side. Press down into the floor, press down into the floor. Support yourself all the way up into a seated pose. Find the sensation of joy. You know what that feels like. Can you create it here? Where do you feel it? Does it come from a memory of something? Or can you create the feeling of joy in your body? Maybe you find it at your throat. Maybe it's just underneath your ribs as you breathe. Maybe it's across that smiling face of yours. Where is it? Make it a little bigger. That feeling of joy. And as we take our three arms together, let's have that feeling of joy behind them. Things are good. Things are good. And this, this breath, everything is good. When you're ready, join me. Ah. May a little bit of that joy stay with you all day. Wonderful to practice with you. Namaste.